Good morning, Year 8, and welcome to our next lesson um, on technology changing over time. Today we're going to focus on a new uh, period of European history. We're going to go and look at the Renaissance period. So this is uh, part of our series of lessons. We've already looked at the Romans, a medieval Britain, and also uh, the Islamic world and China. So today we're going to bring it back to think about the Renaissance. So you need to make sure your assignment is open and you're writing on it and make sure you hand it in at the end of the session. So I'll do now, it's quite straightforward, look at the images on this video and see if you can remember uh, what was happening during the medieval period. So what kind of uh, inventions, what kind of innovations were happening during the medieval period. So pause the video here a couple of minutes, about five minutes, and see if you can jot down as many different ideas as you can. Okay, so we have a massive castle building program that originally gets brought in the beginning of the medieval period with William the Conqueror, who builds lots of wooden Motten Bailey castles. And by the end of the period, we have more castles, uh, stone castles being built. We also have towns and cities being built near rivers using bricks and with walls. We have public health in, in the terms or in ideas of uh, toilets, which are still very similar to the Roman toilets that were there before. These toilets do not have running water, so the waste would normally end up in the river. You've got uh, a Gutenberg Bible. We learned about the Gutenberg printing press being the first um, kind of um, the first printing from mechanical printing press. We also learned in China that we had the first woodcut printing press. We have the introduction of cannon and also uh, crossbows which and longbows, which are the kind of predominant type of technology at the time. Uh, so the longbow technology, uh, you can shoot a lot further than the crossbow. And also cannons are starting to be seen on the battlefields. However, they're not very mobile, they're very heavy, and they're not as effective as uh, cannons that get introduced later on. Uh, we've also got ships, which are starting to sail further. However, still the technology is not there to, to get ships that would cross major oceans like the Atlantic. So, see if you can think of any others and write them in. I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got to write in your assignments later. Um, but today we're learning about the Renaissance, and the first thing we need to do is figure out what the word or what Renaissance means. So you are going to write me a definition of the word Renaissance. Uh, Renaissance quite literally means rebirth. So it's the rebirth of ideas, new ideas, uh, people change, changing how they see particular things. Uh, people who study this period look for a revival of European literature, art and music. So literature, one of the big, um, big Renaissance writers is William Shakespeare, and we know all about him. We've got famous artworks like Leonardo da Vinci, and also famous music. One of the big rebirths is the relationship between um, humans and, and God, and people start to really challenge the preconceived ideas of the church. So what I want you to do is I'd like you to first finish your own definition of the word Renaissance. If you, if you don't quite get it yet, don't worry. Uh, second thing, I want to use the video to make notes on what the Renaissance was, what caused it, and what people learned from it. So watch the video, uh, get a definition down, and I'll see you in about five minutes. Okay, so the period we're looking at is the Renaissance in England. Okay, so the Renaissance was affecting mainly Europe. However, in England, it happened uh, at a time we'd refer to as the Tudor Britain. And Tudors last from 1485, when Henry VII wins the Battle of Bosworth. Uh, he passes the crown to his son, Henry VIII, very famous for having his six wives. It then gets passed to his son, who inherits the throne very young, who's young Edward, who eventually dies very early. Mary, or Bloody Mary, then takes the throne. 
and eventually Elizabeth becomes the final queen. Elizabeth's known as the virgin queen. She never marries. Um, and in between Henry VIII and Elizabeth, we have a huge shift in uh, the religion in this country. So during the Tudor reign, England was one of the wealthiest and most powerful countries in the world. The period marked the beginning of the British Empire in America, the start of the Church of England, and also new technology that had a large impact on change. So, to learn more about life in Renaissance England, I'd like you to switch to the link, okay, so the video link, and I want you to watch that, and I want you to make bullet point notes about what life was like in Renaissance England. So I'll see you at the end of that video. Okay, so well done. So that's life in Renaissance England. We can see that it's very different uh, to the medieval period. Um, but we're going to look at some specific ideas. We're going to look at transport and communication, settlements, public health and science, and also the military. So what you need to do is you need to watch the links that I've given you. And in the Renaissance box, you need to tell me or write examples of uh, technology or advancements in that particular area. So in transport, you'd write it in here. And then you can tell me how much has changed. So why is this a change to what was there before? You can watch these links. So there are four links available for you there to four separate videos. But I'm also going to be going through some slides um, on this Loom video. So once you've watched the video, so come back and you can add some more detail with the information from the slides. So the first one is we'll talk about settlements. Town cities and villages grew in size and importance. Those based along rivers grew the quickest as they had the easiest access to the waterways to transport their goods. Um, the building over here, if you can see with the pillared walkway is Hardwick Hall. And the architecture of the time is based on Italian architecture because Italy was kind of the birthplace of the Renaissance. Some say that Hardwick Hall is more glass than stone because windows for the first time are becoming central to architecture of buildings. Glass is cheaper, it's better, and it's a lot easier to get as well. So as a sign of status, the more glass you can get in your building, the wealthier it makes you look. So Lady Hardwick filled the house with paintings, many of her uh, Queen Elizabeth I. Many wealthy people in the Renaissance era displayed art, for, art from painters, painters such as Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. Uh, this is when the Sistine Chapel was painted by Michelangelo. Da Vinci even drew a design for a helicopter in 1457, 450 years before the first helicopter, helicopter would actually take flight. So Leonardo da Vinci was very ahead of his time. Encouraged by increasing wealth and innovative ideas, people were able to spend money building grand houses and researching new ideas. So during the Tudor period, there was lots of houses being made and lots of people trying to display their wealth with their houses. But let's focus on London for a second. By modern standards, London was actually tiny. It was still the biggest city in Tudor England and 200,000 people lived there in the 1600s. The city was busy, dirty and growing in wealth and size. And the plague hit London between 1348 and 1645 and it hit it 40 times. So it just shows the quality of the city. It's, it's, lots of, uh, it's, a, it's a place where disease can spread very easily. The Great Fire of London in 1666 had been claimed as one of the reasons why the plague was eventually stopped in the city. Rats were killed and buildings were rebuilt in brick and stone. So Christopher Wren became a household name by building St. Paul's Cathedral. At this time, theatres like the Globe Theatre were built. These were all built outside the city walls as the City of London Guild, who managed this city, thought the theatres would encourage bad behaviour and turn people away from God. So that's why the current Globe is on South Bank and not in the City of London. However, the theatres were immensely popular Actors and playwrights like William Shakespeare became extremely successful and encouraged by wealth, uh, increased wealth, people were able to spend money building theatres, 
and even the poorest people could pay a penny to watch the Shakespeare's uh, newest release. So if you watch the video on London, you can continue to fill in the information about, um, about settlements. Let's look at the military, because the military had a huge um, increase in importance. So the development of the cannon led to a different type of castle, which had low walls and protected against the new threat from the sea. The Spanish Armada in 1588 was very substantial. The Spanish fleet sent uh, a group of ships to invade England. They did not succeed, but the invasion uh, taught Elizabeth and her government that developing the navy was imperative uh, for England to protect itself. The idea continued well into the next dynasty, uh, the Stuarts. Soon, Britain could boast the best and fastest warships in the world to defend their growing empire and fund trade across the world. This increasing funded uh, funding for the navy also encouraged overseas exploration to develop. So, the military, the main military advancement under the Tudors or during Renaissance Britain was the Royal Navy. So, what I'm going to ask you to do is go and watch the video on the Royal Navy and add some more information to the military section. Okay, let's have a look at the fact that there wasn't very little war at the time. At the end of the Tudor dynasty, the country was led by Elizabeth I. Her reign was peaceful and long, which meant individuals had a chance to develop ideas and cultural achievements exploded. Artists, builders, playwrights, musicians and writers all did well as their work was much in demand. People were able to travel to the theatre and spend their money on new buildings in the latest fashions from Europe. So because there was such little fighting, it allowed culture to flourish in England and the rest of Europe. The era was dominated by stable, peaceful government who did not demand high taxes and so people had more freedom to explore. So the lack of war is what helped technology to change because people uh, were, were investing money, they had money to spend to enjoy themselves. Transport and communication, so ships were revolutionised. They were made lighter so they could travel faster. The fitting of cannon in the side of the ships also improved so they could fire each one more rapidly. The sails were arranged better so the ships could travel more quickly and efficiently, saving money and time. And that's what led a large movement uh, of the travel to the new world. Trading companies such as the Virginia Company were set up to develop links between the new world of America and Britain purely to make money. Much of the exploration of the time was encouraged by increasing wealth. The Tudor ships used a combination of sails so their ships could harness wind power from every direction. This increased speed, agility, and it saved time and money. So the technology in sails allowed journeys to be faster and safer. Please watch the video on exploration to add more detail to your table. Okay, and that brings us to public health and science. And public health and science is one of the most substantial areas of development. People began to question what had previously been accepted, and this led to better understanding of human uh, anatomy and medicine. So one of the big examples would be a telescope. Before the Renaissance, people believed that God or heaven was above Earth. And now, with the new advances in technology like telescopes, people could actually look into the sky and they started to question where God was. Galileo was a famous astronomer, and he pointed out that the Earth was not the centre of the galaxy. Instead, he said that the Earth rotated around the sun. He was threatened with execution as his discovery proved religious teaching wrong. When Henry VIII divorced his wife, he also closed all of England's monasteries, which meant that his daughter Elizabeth created the poor law, and hospitals uh, were set up, such as St Thomas Hospital and St Bartholomew's Hospital. Hospital. Now, two hospitals that are still there today, and a lot of you will pass St. Thomas on a regular basis. That was created during the Tudor times. So, hospitals were a major improvement under the Renaissance. William Harvey, a famous um, doctor, found that blood circulated around the body and was pumped through the heart. William Gilbert, who was the Queen's doctor, experimented with electricity in England. John Napier discovered mathematical logarithms 
And encouraged by an increasing wealth, these individuals were able to pay to educate themselves. So the birth of universities also started to develop at this time. Knowledge became power in the Renaissance England. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video here and I want you to finish the section on the Renaissance. So tell me what technology was around in the Renaissance and then tell me how much has changed. I'll see you when you finish that task. Okay, so that brings us on to our final two tasks. So how did individuals change technology? Individuals like Elizabeth I, uh, individuals like William Shakespeare, how did they change technology? How did economics, the, the striving for money, change technology? And how did war change technology? Focus on your factors, and if you can think of any other factors, please add them also. So finish that task, I'll give you five minutes, and we'll move on to our final task. All right, boys, really well done today. Let's move on to our final task. So we're doing a big overall point in the Renaissance era, which factor had the biggest impact on the change in technology and why? So you can say an individual, economics, war, or even one of your own factors have the biggest impact on the change in technology in the races era. This is because, okay, whereas something else did not have a big, as big an impact. So maybe compare it to a different factor as well. See if you can compare it to the medieval times for the best answer. All right, so that should take you seven minutes to complete and I'll join you at the end of the lesson. Okay, really well done today. Thank you for your work. Really looking forward to seeing some of it. Please make sure that you're submitting your work. You're handing it in at the end of the lesson. Um, and I'll see you next week. Have a great week, boys.